ladies and gentlemen, I'm here. Yes, it's a Sunday the 25th of February as I record this. Of course, it could be a different time when you're watching it. There is the uh, replay facility, which is rather nice. Uh, but welcome, one and all, to the Bald Explorer's evening chat show uh, with me. Uh, when I say chat show, of course, I mean that I chat to you uh, and you type back at me. Uh, mostly obscenities, it has to be said. A and why not? I deserve them. I've been out and about uh, to the land of my birth, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Although I'm not going to reveal the whole thing, because uh, the, some of it's going to be in a video that's coming up very soon. Uh, lovely to see you there, wherever you are, wherever you're tuning in from, whatever part of the globe you happen to be in, to tune in to that strange bald man and his bespectacled face and his wonky one eye. It's lovely to have you here. Uh, in the show today, we're going to be talking about sunken lanes and uh, precarious cliff tops. Yes, because not only have I been to the land of uh, the land of the Vobe's birth, but I've also been to New Haven, peering down at the dock with the very lovely Chris Monk, who uh, who, who got in touch and said, "Here, Richard, uh, you might be interested in a walk that I like to do. Lovely walk. Why don't you come over and we'll have a little uh, a jaunt out together." And I thought, well, what could be nicer? I could not resist. He didn't actually tell me it was going to be on a precarious cliff top where I was risking life and limb, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, life and limb. But uh, I'm obviously I survived because I'm here to tell the tale. <laughs> Amazing. All good fun. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Get yourself some treats. No doubt you're all sitting there with your big popcorn boxes and you know, shoving your face in like this. I also met up with a um, fabulous actress and novelist, Elizabeth Housden, or Houston, if you get it wrong like I do. Uh, she's the writer of various books. We'll be uh, having a look at that briefly. Although uh, I've got an interview with her, which will be coming in a, another live show just as soon as I've edited it all up. So that's the lineup in today's show. I hope you're going to enjoy it. I hope you're going to inter interact with me. It's going to be great. Thank you, boys. Thank you, boys. That's the band. Give them a big round of applause. Lovely, lovely, a lovely bunch of a lovely bunch of coconuts. Now, let's just check to see if there's anybody actually there that I'm not actually talking to myself. Because very often I feel that I am talking to myself because there's just a funny little camera. Apart from you, who's nodding off at the back. So there we are. We've got Paul. We've got Cynthia. We've got Newport. We've got Frank. We've got David. We've got Serena. We've got Bob. Uh, not Bob. We've got Rob. In fact, Bob's changed his name to Bob to Rob to wherever. We've got John. Hello, John, Mr. Burgo. We've got uh, Adrian, uh, uh, we've got Anne, we've got Malcolm, there's uh, Linda and Elizabeth, whose book I'm holding up and going, yee! So there we are. Fantastic. It's lovely to, lovely to see you. No popcorn, she says, just a glass of wine and well deserved. Now, in uh, some of the um, in some of the playbacks I've noticed, oh, by the way, uh, I, I hope we happen to have uh, good lip sync this evening. I'm using a different camera, I've tweaked around a little bit more, so I'm hoping it's all working. You'll let me know. Yeah, um, I, I notice I have a habit of doing this. I keep swinging backwards and forth. I'm a swinger, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a swinger. Well, you know, I'm a 60s child. That's the trouble. Uh, yes, yeah, so I swing forward and backwards as if I was in the playground, as if I was there in the playground on those switch you've seen those kids that can manage to get right the way round and then fall off and break their neck yeah and they're in intensive care having their spine rejigged well that's not so good much rather go on the old roundabouts hey do you remember do you remember in the old days you used to have those seesaws but not not the seesaw marjorie door type thing those seesaws that you used to get on hang on like this and there would be a line of you and it was like a dragon or um, a monster of some description and you'd all go together like that. Do you remember that? I remember that. I've never seen them. I've not seen them. Have you got them where you are? Be interested to know. Don't know why, but I would. <laughs> That's me, isn't it? Hmm. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm I'm swinging all over the place in today's show and 
and uh, I tend to do that all the time. Let's just exercise the head. There we go. Make sure it doesn't fall off. I'm, I'm obviously in a good mood. See, I've been out seeing another woman today. That's what happens. Happened on Friday. There was the lovely Julia taking me prancing around into the trees. And this time the lovely Elizabeth, or Lizzie as I like to call her, took me around to my birthplace. So um, let's have a look at some of the people I've been meeting then. Let's have a little gander. So first of all, we're going to talk about sunken lanes and we're going to talk about New Haven Cliff. So let's start with the lovely Chris Monk, because Chris, as I say, he got in touch with me and says, Richard, I've heard your plea for people to come along and go for a walk with you. And I really do mean that. It would be lovely to go and have a walk with some of my listeners, uh, listeners, viewers, and get to know them a little bit better and have a, a wander around some of their favourite walks or historic walks or the walks that they're not keen to do on their own and they need a bald sort of strapping man to help them get through it. Those sort of things. So Chris got in touch and he said, oh, i like to take you round the, the uh, New Haven Fort and up onto the cliffs. Here's a picture of Chris and me um, up on the uh, on the top of the cliffs. You can see my teeth are chattering. Oh, by the way, um, Chris is the one in the silly hat. Uh, no, no, no. Well, well, sorry. Um, he's the one in glasses. No, no, that's no good. He's the one in black. That's better. That's right. Not black glasses. No, he's the he's. Oh, you know which one he is. Um, and we're peering out to see to see what we can see. It's uh, it's all good fun. Um, what else have we got here? Hang on. There's another pic. I've got another picture. Uh, here's me trying to impress Chris, telling him a joke, and you can see how impressed he is at the end of it. Uh, do you know he actually said to me? <laughs> now this is true. He said to me. Uh, when I arrived, he said, oh, it's so nice to meet you. He said, I was very keen to show you on this uh, walk and everything. He said, but um, all of a sudden, these live shows kept popping up into my feed. I've been following your walks and I thought they were great. And then this this mad fool suddenly turns up. This, he's, hang on, this I thought he was the bald explorer, this semi-serious bloke who walks aloud around and goes, hello, my name's Richard Verbs and I am on another walk. And here I'm walking here to there. And he said, and then there was this fruitcake who got, <laughs> he's popping up on my feed. He says, have I let myself in for this idiot? Is he going to shove me off the cliff just for a laugh? And I didn't know how to answer that, really. But, you know, there you go. Anyway, so that was Chris. Who else have I been seeing? Well, as I say, oh, an authoress. Yes, the lovely uh, Liz, or Lizzie, as I like to call her. Um, let's go back into here and see if we can find the picture. Here we go. So, um, as ever, when I meet somebody, I try to sort of lighten the mood. So uh, I'm telling her a joke here. And you can see on uh, Elizabeth's face that uh, she's thinking, oh, you think you're funny, don't you? So obviously that, that wasn't going down so well. Um, however, there I have another picture here. These are stills from the um, from the show, and you can see. Actually, I seem to have got away with it. Whatever it is, I say that she's she's got that face that's saying, "I'll let you off on this occasion, uh, but don't do it again, you cheeky ball man." So. Um, so that's uh, you know so that's the situation and there let's see who else has just come into the uh, into the room make sure it's all going um paul is here here john i've said john um elise and frank and newport and steve um <laughs> steve says it's awkward holiday snaps yes it was a bit awkward anyway never mind that so <clears throat> let's get on to uh, a first thing new haven cliff went for a walk with um with the lovely chris and uh, we went up to uh, New Haven. Now, he, 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 um, he's not from New Haven. He's actually from Brighton. And he moved to New Haven, uh, I think, you know, so that the police didn't catch up with him, basically. Uh, I think there was uh, one or two uh, jobs that uh, <clears throat> the balaclava could no longer be used for, shall we say that. So he'd moved to New Haven for, to start a new life. But um, to be fair, he wasn't terribly complimentary about New Haven. Now, I don't know if anybody watching is in New Haven, lives in New Haven, has escaped from New Haven, is one of the French owners of the port uh, in New Haven. But um, I'm not going to say one way or another because uh, naturally I value my life. So anyway, he took me, he said, I'm not going to take you around New Haven. Uh, I'm going to take you somewhere much more interesting. And we went up onto Castle Hill where there is the New Haven fort. And um, he said it was a, a Palmerston's fort, which is similar to what my mate Gary Baines at the um, 
at the Shoreham Fort is uh, all about. So, uh, but it's a hell of a lot bigger, I have to say. Uh, there was nobody there manning the guns, so we were right. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about that because I want to get in touch with Shoreham, um, not Shoreham Fort, what am I talking about? Um, the other one. The, the one I just mentioned, well, you know, New Haven, New Haven. There we are, New Haven. New, I'm going to get in touch with them and see if maybe they could take me around. So anyway, there it is. And we do look at a bit and you'll have to wait for the video for the full length of that. However, however, it was up on the cliffs that he took me. And I've got a little snippet I've just taken from the rushes. So I want to show you that first of all. So here we go. Ha feast your eyes on this. I'm in New Haven and I'm on a lovely walk with one of my uh wonderful viewers and here he is hi hello it's chris monk hello chris hello how are you doing richard i'm doing all right you've picked a, a beautiful sunny day to cold. take me on a walk but yes cold cold, <laughs> cold and windy <laughs> is, is, it a, is it a steep fall to the i mean a oh, steep no. drop <laughs> oh, uh, sure I, d I, d I don't want to disappear down into oblivion oh yes there's a cliff edge sign now that's handy well, this is terrific. I'm really enjoying this, Chris. This is fantastic. I'm going to just venture a little towards the cliff edge, but I'm not going to drop over just to get some of these t wonderful views. Here we go. I'm risking, I'm risking myself here, and I, I hope you all appreciate it. But over there, you've got some Seaford Head. Oh, yes. Um, well, they've had a few cliff falls last year. Oh, did oh really? Yeah, apparently, yeah. Um, I guess that's the erosion that we're currently <laughs> experiencing all the time, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it's like here, it's like crumbly. But as we come up to this gun in place, now look at this. This is great. It's a big, it's a big, um, you know, area for the gun to sit. It must have been noisy operating this. Yeah. Down this little slope. And oh yeah, so lots of places for uh, various rooms for the troops to be hidden. And if they were under attack, oh, I see behind here, you can see there's a little concrete bunker just behind these brambles. And then what have we got down here? Let's have a little, and this I guess is where they would, the mess hall or <laughs> operations. It's funny how they brick these things up. Well, they don't like people going in, do they, with their cameras? But which is a shame, because it's all history, it's isn't it? Room. Yeah. But then you'll get some kids in there with needles and goodness knows what I am. I'm, you know. Gun emplacements, cliff edges, very dangerous stuff. Chris was taking me to. Oh, and I can tell you, I was all a bit wibbly shaky at the end of that. Uh, but no, very interesting. Those gun emplacements, I still don't know whether they were the anti-aircraft gun or whether they were just there as like great big cannon to um, prevent the enemy ships sailing into New Haven. Uh, perhaps somebody knows and can let me know. Uh, there were three of those. There were three of those gun emplacements all along and there was the coastal uh, lookout. They're maybe looking for smugglers. Oh, that's a nice link, but it's a bit too early. Uh, we'll get onto the smugglers and sunken lanes in a minute. But it was very nice. So, um, but the, it's a stone's throw from the um, Bishop Stone tide mills which is in that area um if when you're on the top there you as, as he said you can see right over to seaford head uh, and then round the corner of seaford head is the uh, very lovely seven sisters uh, and don't ask me to uh, give you their names ipsy bipsy tipsy two c and teeny weeny no that might not be right actually i think that i'm getting confused with something else anyway la la <laughs> <laughs> I'm in la di da la I think half the time anyway um, yeah so around the corner you've got the seven sisters and uh, if you check out the YouTube channel of course there are some a number of videos that Mr Snow Martin Snow where is Martin Snow these days we haven't seen him very much we must get Martin on the show Martin 
where is he? he's probably he's probably around the back peddling uh, peddling hard to keep the lights on the cameras running and the computers whirring that's that's what he's up to at the moment behind the scenes working very hard actually the only the other day we had a few technical issues um yeah so check out the seven sisters stuff because that was um oh exemplary and and it was in the summer it was in the summer when the weather was warm at the moment we've got very very cold weather uh, and it may not look like my teeth are chattering well I'm, they are chattering they're chattering to you you fools but no i don't mean not you the fool i mean me the fool. no never mind anyway um yeah so it is actually i've got a little fire in here but the rest of the house poor old billy and sharifa his girlfriend they're um they're up in the uh, upper deck of the vobes ship that's uh, bringing you all this mad entertainment and and they're shivering their little what's it's off bless them but um, being young people they have um, a slightly unique way of keeping themselves warm in which um, I'm not going to go into because of an unsavory nature however let's move on shall we so let's talk about sunken lanes we talked about smugglers earlier well smugglers wouldn't really want to sail into port would they with all their goods because the, the customs guys are going to be waiting for them that's no good of course they don't want to do that what they want to do is find a nefarious route in a subterranean passage maybe an underground tunnel or maybe a sunken lane what is a sunken lane that's what i i guess you want to know what is a sunken lane well um the sunken lanes are uh, fascinating things uh, i've got some information but let me just hang on a minute before we get onto that uh, let's let me run a little bit of video about sunken lanes now i met up with lovely elizabeth as you saw earlier and um we did a couple of videos we went to the uh, birthplace of my no wait i went to the birthplace of my life the, the where i popped out where i was saying this in the naked englishman it was like a it was like um a a, a computer game when you spawn you know you're born and you spawn into a place and out i popped but uh, we'll get onto that in a minute and we had a look and and was there a connection when i arrived there i'll uh, i'll leave you in uh, that thought but first so uh, we made a second video I'm getting a bit confused here we made a second video about sunken lane so i just wanted to show you what a sunken lane is in case you're you know dim uh, i mean sorry uh, a, a bit confused in case you're a bit confused so here's here's some footage of um a, a sunken lane we're actually walking along here something that's called the shipwright's way the shipwright's way runs from alice holt's forest in the northeast of hampshire right the way down to portsmouth dockyard and in fact actually it has um references as far back as the 13th century now these lanes are the sunken lanes they, they are indeed um and this is a particularly wonderful example of a sunken lane which are unique in britain to just two counties hampshire is one and devon is the other and but they don't appear anywhere else at all and this particular one local people like me we call it it's known as the smuggler's way this route um and that tells you exactly what it was what it what it was <laughs> yes because you could you could certainly imagine smugglers coming up here in the dead of night or even in the uh, in in the dead of day in dead of day yes. um, <laughs> because you're going to be pretty much unobserved from any high place in a sunken lane mm, quite yes so there we are sunken lane you're watching the uh, the bald explorer show should you have just tuned in halfway not knowing quite what this is so that's the sunken lane and uh, that's over in hampshire near a place called list and there's going to be a video where you'll see liz and i gabbling on not just about that but also about other interesting things that's coming up however it's a bit more information here on sunken lanes because i was very intrigued um, it's this, I've got this from the very reliable uh, website, Wikipedia. Pardon? Wikipedia. Oh, Wikipedia. Oh, very reliable. Yeah, I just edited it and added it myself, actually, only minutes ago. So there's a sunken lane, also a hollow way, or hollow way, is a road or track that's significantly lower than the land on either side, not formed by the recent engineering of a road cutting, but possibly of a greater age. Various mechanisms have been proposed for how hollow ways are formed, including erosion by water, 
or traffic, the digging of embankments to, to assist the herding of livestock, and the digging of double banks to mark the boundaries of estates. These are all mechanisms, are all possible, and they all different things. Sunken lanes are characteristic uh, feature in landscape of southern England, especially in the chalk areas of north and south downs, the green sand areas of the Weald. And I assume that some of the thing about that sunken lanes is because there's a little bit of um, subsidence going on, or as the traffic pounds it, it's sort of getting lower and lower. It doesn't actually say that. It says, while many sunken lanes are now metalled, which is basically like a bit of a tarmac or, um, no, no, not tarmac, or um, sort of got um, like gravel and stuff or, or whatever. It says, uh, some are still unsurfaced green lanes, typically now designated as bridleways or byways. Not my ways, byways. You can buy one and get one free. So, uh, so that anyway, they are videos coming up very soon, ladies and gentlemen, and I do hope that um, you're going to look out for those. On Monday, can't remember what's coming up Monday now, uh, have we had the snowdrop walk? Have we had the snowdrop walk? I'm not quite sure, I, I get a bit confused, because I've got a number of them all lined up. Um, of course we've got the, uh, the lovely uh, Julia and the uh, Kingly Vale ones, and then we've got the New Haven and we've got that, and I'm sure there's a couple more. Oh, there's... Um, there's one in Kiln Wood as well to come. So there's a, there's a bunch of them. Very exciting. Are you excited? That's what I want to know. Let's just see what's going on in the uh, in the chat room. See how people are. He's hiding in the archives with Eric. Oh, is that Mr. Martin Snow? Malcolm says one of our Coast Watch stations, um, one of our Coast Watch stations are in New Haven by the fort. Yes, then, and we. I, I nearly put a picture up to show you that actually. I had a nice walk at Sheep Down in Petworth today. Oh, good for you. Who was that? Uh, that was Dave. Lovely. Neil Gardner has uh, just joined. Hello, Neil. Very nice to see you. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, Kevin Hall is uh, saying concrete. Oh, is that what metal What metal road is? It's sort of concrete, is it? Martin's playing jazz flute. Oh, he's, he's stopped, actually. He's just stopped. Um, oh, yes. It is uh, it is the snowdrop walk. Wor definitely worth tuning in for that, ladies and gentlemen. It's... Uh, it's going to be a hoot. Now, I went to I went to Liss. I went to Liss in Hampshire. I wasn't taking the Michael. I went to Liss in Hampshire. So, and I've got some pictures, and I want to tell you a little bit about Liss. I don't need too much information because obviously we've got a video about it. But here, I went into Liss. I was born in nineteen six something um, in Liss in Hampshire. It's uh, very close to Petersfield, uh, and I drove in uh, to what's now called Liss. But it is sort of new lists, actually, uh, and I was a bit disappointed. I was a bit disappointed because um, it seemed a bit of a strange place. I've lost my pictures. Where are my pictures? Hang on, let's get the next one up. Um, however, you see, there's the uh, the railway station there. It's all very modern. I was expecting to, you know, I wanted to have been born into some oldie, woldy, um, romantic place, not some urban conurbation. Um, however. I walked around, took some pictures, and then I discovered this place with a bicycle <laughs> fixed to the wall. And I realised I had come home. If anyone is mad enough to stick a bicycle on the side of a building, then I was obviously born in the right place. I suddenly realised how, how true that was. So I nipped up to the church, uh, the Diocese of Portsmouth it is, there's St Mary's Church, and had a little poke about there. And what was amazing... This is amazing. This is the churchyard or part of the churchyard. And you know how people put flowers on graves? Somebody must have um, sprinkled moon dust in your hair. No, no uh, somebody must have sprinkled wild seeds because there were wild flowers everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Here's another view. Um, a lot of snowdrops, but not only that, and you can't really see them in these pictures. And I have got some others. Um, there, there were, I don't know whether they were crocuses, they were purple looking flower violets, are they, or something, I don't know. There was a whole host of these flowers which were just growing up randomly and it looked very, very beautiful. However, um, the, the rest of the, uh, the area was um, not to my liking, I have to say. So uh, Liz then said, don't panic, I'm going to take you to um, 
West Liss, which is actually Old Liss, the original bit, because the town or the village, I don't know whether it's a town or a village really, to be honest with you, but um, it grew up around the, the, the railway station. Um, but the original bit didn't have a railway station. So you can see on that sign it says Liss One Mile, but actually that sign is in Old Liss. And um, here's a better picture. Here we go. This is by the Spread Eagle. Uh, and I was spread eagled as I took this photograph. You can see. So there's the purple flowers. What are those? Are they are they crocuses? Are they violets? Are they are they triffids? Whatever, whatever. That tree, by the way, on the left hand side uh, is a hollow tree, and we we went and inspected it, and uh, it, it's all very it, it's all very swish, um, all very nice. Anyway, so uh, there's some pictures of uh, there's some pictures of Liz, but there is a cottage hospital round the corner from there and Liz very kindly took me to this cottage hospital because back in the 1960 something um, the old Vobie popped out of his mother's things and uh, was delivered and I, I thought I had this notion um, that when when we went there there would be a woman with the, one of those sort of white hats and uh, a sort of bluish uh, matrony outfit who would be rushing out as soon as I came up uh, the driveway be rushing out going good gracious good gracious good heavens oh my it's been years it must be 50 something years uh, oh, oh Richard is it really you the little babby the little babby that I saw all the hyther knew she's suddenly gone Scottish hey Richard is it really you I I was there pulling on your legs and pulling you out head first leg first arm first pee pee first whatever first um but of course th there was nobody there I was ready to embrace her and say oh midwife midwife after so long it's so lovely to see you um but it's uh, it's no longer a maternity hospital anymore I'm afraid ladies and gentlemen but good news is it's not a private house as I imagined it might be it is actually it's now a home for uh, disabled children so it's still you know little little kiddies um but uh, I wasn't invited to go up so I just took some pictures and and um surreptitiously you know sneaked through the brambles to get close to they didn't want to get arrested or anything but I haven't I'm not going to put them out here now because um I'm going to save all that for the video when it comes up in the in the forthcoming week and uh, I hope that you'll enjoy that and um Liz's reaction to me uh, wondering and of course, I, I, um, I said to Liz, you know, coming back to the place that you were born, I don't know how many people ever do that, go to the very place, the very spot and go, this is where I was born, whether there was some sort of feeling of coming home. And I'm going to leave that uh, for the video to reveal itself. So all oh, terribly exciting, terribly, terribly exciting, uh, don't you think? So, um, how are we doing for time? Let's have a quick gander. Oh, look at that. That half an hour goes so fast. But before we go, before we go, just wanted to say, uh, coming up, I've got an interview with the lovely Liz Housden. She's uh, written a tip trilogy of books, and she's on the last book at the moment. This is the first one, A Gentleman Go By. It says on the back here... The time is 1788, the year before the French Revolution. In Paris, the mood against the king and the aristocrats is becoming extremely, increasingly ugly. Across the channel in London, the 19-year-old orphan socialite Lady Sof Sophia Gatsby, or Catersby, is left, I'm crap at reading really, is left alone with her stepfather. No, he's left alone when her step, I can't even read. Um, uh, Edward, Earl of Roxford, is killed fighting for his country in a foreign war. Yet, she is not to be much pitied, for he has left her a fortune. But, there is a stipulation. Stipulation! 
Yes, there's a stipulation, and uh, you'll only know that if you read the book. A stipulation, a stipulation, you really have to do what I say. A stipulation, a stipulation, it'll all come out, I'm sure, at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, stick to the day job. Uh, so th anyway, that's uh, Liz's book, and it's, uh, it's a bodice-ripping, smuggling, hipping right rollicking read so uh, make sure you grab hold of that but of course um of course <laughs> i should say that uh, this isn't the only author out there you know oh no not by a long chalk uh, who writes who writes uh, trilogies oh no no i was only reading this funny little book uh, the other day by um a, 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 an author um i'm not quite sure how good it is um it's a it's a strange strange children's yarn with um Crag flinging and uh, all sorts of um, royals in it. Um, so it's got the, the Royal Tournament is the first book that this uh, peculiar bloke wrote. And, and then there's the second book, The Purple Death. Look at the whip for that. You can really get a table rocking with that one. And, and that's quite a gruesome thing with um, lots of nasties in it. And then the follow up of that one called The Isle of Gid uh, by this same unknown author unknown unsuccessful author oh talking of which uh, the same bloke is um, is going to be in a west london school on thursday and friday doing his patron of reading job um, so yes i shall be up there uh, teaching kids uh, some well reading to the kids i hope i read better than i did earlier some children's stuff it's it's national book day you see on thursday and they all dress up in harry potter outfits or rolled out doll characters they don't seem to dress up in um, Splidge the Cragflinger characters, um, sadly. But um, hey-ho. Um, but I shall be up there. So I probably won't be doing shows. What The reason I've said all of that is because I won't be doing shows at the end of the week. That's really the truth of it. That's the crux. Don't you, get, don't you stick your hand in my crux. Thank you. Um, I, so, uh, yes. And then, and then I shall be going up north. But Harriet hates it when I say I'm going up north. Going to the Midlands. Going to the Midlands, love. Um, going there because... Um... Oh, it's still going, that music. Um, <laughs> going to the Midlands and, and bringing the show, taking the show with me. So from Harriet's abode, we'll have Harriet on the show. From Harriet's abode, the show will be coming to you from uh, Saturday, probably, uh, as well. So we may do weekend shows to make, make up for the shows that we don't do, if that makes sense. So before I go, let's just see what uh, people have made of the show. If you've enjoyed the show or not. Crocuses. That's what they are. Thank you. Thank you. What did I call them? I can't remember. Violets. Uh, cro everyone's saying crocuses. Uh, Paul Walton has arrived. Paul, a bit late now. We're going. We're going. Nick Edwards says the, uh, like the higher synth bucket impressions. Oh, thank you very much uh dan evans the question the question is where is richard well yeah well you know he's um he's gone a bit doolally i think you should go for a lie down says kevin hall yes probably need it splidge is lovely says elizabeth thank you very much steve says that's where they filmed the saint trinian's great robbery mate at the longmore military track i want to go and investigate the longmore military track i didn't know I didn't know St. Trinian's was filmed there. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, I, I do like uh, all those characters. I um, Didn't um, Terry Thomas appear in one of the St. Trinian's? Absolute shower, I say. It's absolute shower. Really? Hmm. Why, you cad. Is she a bit of a girl? Is she, is she a filly? Oh, I say. This is very good. Very, very good. I used to like old Terry Thomas. He died in a terrible, terrible um, tragedy, wasn't it? Did Parkinson's in a in a care home. Unknown, un, unrecognised. It was terrible. Anyway, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I've enjoyed every uh, last moment of it. There'll be a show tomorrow. My sister is coming in tomorrow. I'm gonna, oh, she's coming to stay with me. We may be, if the sun is shining, sprinkling my father's ashes at long last and sorting out the uh, probate business. So... Um, we may I may get her on and I don't know quite what we'll talk about, but we may be talking about um, the whole business of probate and uh, funerals from a first, per, you know, from experiencing it for the first time or 
she's, she's a nurse. We may be talking about nursing. We may be talking about who knows what. We'll try and find something to sample on the show and uh, we'll try and entertain you. That's the main thing. So thank you very much, uh, everybody, for watching. It's been an absolute hoot and I have enjoyed every last moment of it. But got to go. So do join me again on the next one. There'll be a show tomorrow, eight o'clock, same time. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday I'm planning, but Thursday and Friday, no. Take care one and all, bye for now. You can have our own little party.